But thank you very much for this rare opportunity. So it's a really great pleasure to discuss this paper. I like it a lot because the authors uh, put great efforts in clean identification. And also I learned quite a bit about the history and perspectives in money market bond risks. Okay, so more specifically, this paper explores the unexpected credit and liquidity risk posted by impaired underlying money market instruments during the credit crisis to identify the increase, the change in the risk-taking opportunities for the money market funds. And then the cross-sectional difference in terms of risk-taking behavior of the money market funds is related to the risk-taking incentives, namely their sponsors' willingness and capacity to bail out in the crisis. All right, so the period of interest studied in this paper, the so-called pulse period, is from August 07 to August 08. So it started from uh, the BNP Paris Booth event cited in this paper, and the contemporaneous event here in the US with the filing for bankruptcy by the American Home Mortgage Investment Corporation. So on August 6, 2007, um, the, its asset-backed commercial paper program exercised the option to extend its uh, maturity at a rate that turned out to be well below the market. So as a consequence, as a result, these events are followed by a sharp surge in uh, increase in risk premium of some thinly, previously thinly riskless uh, money market instruments. All right, this, uh, this period ended in August 2008 based on this sample, which is basically post the ba uh, Lehman bankruptcy. So this was followed by some explicit government insurance for the money funds, which then eventually eliminates the risk premium for the money market instruments. Um, so the results in table three basically shows in the post period, the money market instruments earned a significantly higher risk premium, which uh, reflects the unexpected exogenous surge in uh, risk-taking opportunities for the money funds. Um, the only thing I would uh, interpret a little bit different here is that if we compare the two periods, the pre and post periods, all the money making instruments seem to have earned a higher risk premium during the post period. Right? Even the repos earned a significantly higher risk premium. So nothing seems uh, risk-free in this period. So the only thing is the bank deposit, they earned an insignificant spread, but this is probably due to the reduced power. Because uh, bank deposits count for only less than 3% of the asset share in the whole sample period, and a lot of money funds probably shifted away from them during the post period. Um, and especially those with less uh, reputation concern and, go, uh, and greater financial strength which is exactly the two mechanisms identified in this paper that are related to the risk-taking incentives for the money funds. Okay. So reputation concern and financial strength are both observable. They lead to the same exposed action or behavior of the sponsor, which is bailout uh, in a crisis. However, different ex ante uh, risk incentives or is taking behavior. So the question is then, why do the two components, the two incentive channels, affect risks in different ways? Right? So if we think about it, uh, so for example, why would the portfolio manager right, uh, take, so suppose the uh, reputation concern is, uh, is large. So why would the, the uh, portfolio manager, would they take risky investment, just uh, anticipating the affiliates or the sponsors would absorb the losses. On the other hand, if such moral hazard problem is not present, then why would the sponsors, even if they are financially strong, have less incentives to reduce risk, given they have to internalize the cost of providing support uh, and there was indeed a positive probability of a large-scale run on the whole industry, right? 
So while the results in this part are convincing, I think uh, more theoretical background or more theoretical support for this part and also develop the uh, hypothesis a little bit further would be very helpful here. Um, to measure the financial reputation, two measures are used. One is the fraction of uh, assets other than the institutional money markets in the total assets of the fund family. The other is, uh, whether, is an indicator variable of whether the uh, sponsor is a financial conglomerate. To capture the financial strengths, two measures are used. One is whether the sponsor has a credit rating, and the other is the CDS price for the sponsor's uh, senior debt securities. The challenge here, though, is it's hard to orthogonize these two components. So the financial conglomerates presumably have deeper pockets. And the sponsors with uh, credit rating probably have greater reputation concerns. But given the opposite prediction on risk-taking behavior, risk-taking incentives of the two channels, a cleaner separation of the uh, sort of two components of the two risk channels would be, would be nice here. Another thought here is whether risk allocation could play a role in explaining the results in this part. Right? By definition, higher reputation concern means more uh, assets in non-money market uh, assets, more business in non-money market assets. And therefore, more risk-taking opportunities in those uh, areas, in those business, especially in the post period. So for example, CCR uh, was sponsored by the Bank of America, which probably could have increased risk in other areas, in other assets during the crisis period. Um, and so if that's the reason why it didn't need to increase the risk in money market funds, then this channel is not necessarily related to the cost of a run. And at the same time, though, the poor performance of other alternative money or cash management vehicles, such as enhanced uh, cash funds and the auction rate securities, uh, likely boosted the inflows to the money market funds during this, uh, during this period. Uh, that is because uh, unlike the sponsor's support for the money market funds, the dealer's support for the auction rate securities did not fare well during the uh, financial turmoil. And in fact, if we look at the results for the placebo sample for the retail money market funds, the reputation measure, which again is a fraction of non-retail money market funds in the total asset of the funds family, becomes a predominant explanatory uh, variable, the predominant factor explaining the risk-taking behavior of the money funds. So given the flow performance sensitivity is low in both periods. With this result, right, reputation explaining the risk-taking behavior in both periods, both the pre and post period, indicate that uh, the money funds took less risk when there were more opportunities for the fund sponsor to take risks in other areas. Okay. So in general, while the risk, determine, risk determinants related to the sponsor's characteristics and their implicit guarantee uh, are very compelling and also important, I still wonder whether there are other factors that could potentially uh, explain the general trend in risk taking in the post period as well as in the cross section. So for example, uh, the fund sponsor's financial support should reflect not only the concerns about the response of the investors to the risk, but also the expected and actual losses in the fund's portfolio. So based on the summary table, Fidelity, Bank of America, Bank of New York Mellon, all had more than one institutional money market fund. And so the fund sponsor is likely to provide financial support for the fund that previously earned higher gross yield which then may drive the risk-taking incentives to boost yield. Right. Um, and also, the uh, past holding of problematic uh, securities could be a very promising uh, predictor for the future money market fund strengths. Um, 
So the, firm, the firms are unlikely to hold the, uh, to buy lemon papers again, but still controlling for such exposure could be important in understanding the cross-sectional outcome uh, for money market funds, especially in terms of uh, flows. Um, and one final comment on this slide is that an alternative measure for the portfolio risk could be the individual money market funds rating. Presumably, they're not uh, all triple A's. But a nice further step of this paper is then to take the exposed action of the sponsors during the crisis, during the run, to their reputation and the financial strength measures. But an additional consideration here could be, well, maybe the banks are more likely to report their financial support for their money funds just because they face more rigorous, thank you, more rigorous uh, regulatory oversight and also different, regular, uh, different disclosure requirements than other financial service firms. Right. So some other additional comments. To study the role of uh, reputation and financial strengths, uh, two subsample analyses are performed. One is within the financial conglomerate to hold the reputation cons concern constant. The other is within the independent investment management company to hold the financial strength constant. So I'm not quite sure why the second one, the latter one, is a pure measure for, for financial strength. So an alternative test uh, possibly could be to interact the continuous measure for, uh, for reputation concern, which again is a fraction of uh, uh, assets other than the institutional money market uh, funds and the continuous measure for reputation concerns, which is the CDS price. And then following the uh, earlier strategy to perform the analysis for both the post and the pre period, the coefficients on the interaction term should be significantly more negative in the post period. All right, so results in table nine, at least uh, based on my version, is quite uh, uh, puzzling to me. So the interaction term between the reputation and the post dummy becomes significantly positive. So does this contradict the main finding of this paper that in, you know, when the reputation concern of the sponsor is high, the money market fund uh, take less risk, right? So compared to the early result in, in table five. All right. So to summarize, this is a really nice paper. It uh, explores the exogenous shift in the risk-taking opportunities for the money market funds to study the risk-taking behavior uh, of their affiliates and sponsors. And this paper highlights the, some uh, ex ante risk measures that are related uh, to the sponsor's characteristics and implicit guarantee, which predicted poor outcomes for certain money market funds during the past crisis. So this paper provides guidance on monitoring or at least uh, mitigating the money market fund risks to reduce the likelihood uh, of another potential crisis. And in fact, when assigning ratings to the money market funds, the rating agencies indeed began focusing more or more specifically on the resources and abilities of the sponsor to support their money market funds during a crisis. And the new SEC regulation adopted in 2010 also facilitates the support of the sponsor during such emergencies. So, thank you.